Howdy, everybody. We're going to get ready to start here in a couple. Um, I don't have anything specific planned or put together, although I do see my door open there on that side. Uh, I'll just kind of leave it here for a moment. It looks like the chat is finally working. I have been working on that. It's not hard. It just isn't hard. But for some reason, I'll go and I'll do a unlisted live in order to mess with it, and it'll mess up and screw around. And it seems to work fine when I am actually live live. So I think maybe this weekend I might wind up, you might see me pop up on live a couple times just because I'm screwing around and trying to make it look a little bit better because right now it's really faded out, but I don't want to mess with it right now. So the other thing I was going to say is, and I kind of started to say at the beginning, is I don't have like a big there's no presentation plan for this. We are pretty much going to build the namesake of the channel, and that is going to be Sly. And the only requirement I really have for him is that he be a kitsune. That's the only thing I really care about, because it's a fox. So aside from that, that is pretty much what we're going to be doing today. Uh, I did do that video on kind of the basics of a, of a kineticist. And I'm shaking my head because I actually had 15 or 20 more minutes of footage. So I decided to stop there, kind of cut it off, redo the ending, and it's going to get broken up into multiple videos simply because there's a lot to kineticists. And I don't want to even make it sound like they are hard mechanically because they aren't. But for character creation, and we're going to kind of go over that today, for character creation, they are so complicated. I don't want to say complicated. That makes it sound bad. If you have so many options, is a better way to put it. I love options, and I love the complications of it, but I don't want to make it sound like complicated, like, oh, it's going to be horrible. It's not. It's a lot of fun. There's just so much to do. So I was kind of messing around with it, and I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and put one together live on the air. So that is what we're going to be doing. Let's make Aang. Well, I think you have to get to... Let me think, let me think, let me think, because I'm working on this for another video. I think you have to get to level... 13 or 15 before you can get all six elements, which you could, so that'd be interesting. But it'd only work if Aang was a Kitsune instead of a bald little kid. <laughs> Oh, sure. For Raven's Path for that, uh, that Foundry add-on. Actually, that came from someone else, and I need to pull their name out of the comments because it is such a good... It's such a good add-on. It's such a good module for Foundry. I kind of like it better than the Action HUD, but like I was saying before in some of the other videos, is it kind of gets in the way when you're trying to describe something. But man, it just shows you everything. Uh, so I love that very much. So I'm going to go ahead and switch screens here. And this is what I have built up over here. I use, as I've said a couple times, basically in some other videos and things like that, there are many other... That's a good... I, like I said, I do like that, that module very much. Um, but there are a lot of character builders out there. And this one's free. I did pay for the add-on for it so that you can use archetypes and so on and so forth, those kind of things. There's so much you can bring in, but we are going to be doing a Kitsune in um, Path Builder. So I keep looking at the chat. I need to figure out. That's one of the things that's going to work as I get more and more better at this is being able to hold a conversation and do stuff at the same time. So we are picking a Kitsune. I do actually have, if there's any questions about it, I do have my Lost Omens uh, Ancestry Guide, which has the Kitsune entry in it for when we do get to... Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's set some of their basic structures now. Oh yeah, Daniel, Path Builder is great. It is, it's by far my favorite. There's Hero, no, I don't say Hero Forge. Hero Forge is where I make tokens out of. I can't think of the other names of the other ones. Oh, good, yeah. Like I said, let, 
it's, it's a great place to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Kitsune, Kineticist. Um, we'll keep the background for a little bit later, but let's go over some of the Kitsune uh, Hero Lab. That is the right one. Yeah, you, I think you have to pay for that one, but that one has... Path Builder has a bunch of GM elements in it as well. We saw that in Counter Builder, which is fantastic. But Hero Lab has a whole bunch of other elements too. Hey, nice to see you, Rosalie. I'm glad that you made it on, and hopefully you're going to help me build this Kitsune. And this is the namesake. Let's go ahead and throw that up here so when I save it, it'll be saved to it. So this is going to be Sly. We'll have to figure out a last name later. But... Yes, we're still on the A's of the ABCs. We're doing Ancestry. And we're going to do the full thing through Pathfinder 2, or Pathfinder, through Path Builder 2. So Heritage, now there are Heritages for Kitsune are super interesting. I will say this, from me looking at it, the ones that would make, to me, the most sense for a Kineticist are probably... If we work on Charisma a little bit, maybe Dark Fields. If we were going to go a Wood Kineticist, Earthly Wilds would be good. I am kind of thinking, though, that Empty Sky Kitsune might be a good one to have. Frozen Wind is would be good if we were going to do a Water Kitsune. Um, so I'm going to leave it up to a vote and I'm going to talk about a few of these, but go ahead and put in the chat what you guys think you might want to do. And we'll kind of do a, do a majority rules here. But with Celestial Envoy, you basically get Invoke Celestial Privilege, which is a reaction, which is kind of like Halfling Luck, but only for divine effects. It's still good. And in the remaster, the divine effects is going to be something that that is usable so it will be it's a good trait i don't know if it works well for a kineticist or works the best for a kineticist i'm not an optimizer i'm more of a role player but i don't see how that would add to the role play for me personally now dark fields dark fields kitsune uh demoralize the big thing it does is um you can subtly demoralize others. When you do, demoralize loses the auditory traits and gains the visual trait. So this would just be curling your lips or doing something like that in order to do your demoralize. We have the Earthly Wilds. You gain a Jaws unarmed attack that deals 1d6. And in the Brawling Group, have Finesse and Unarmed Traits. And your alternate form is a Fox, which has a first level Pest Form. That would be good if we were going to be doing a wood or earth or a melee, I always say melee, melee type of kineticist. And then we have empty sky, uh, spell, familiar, spell, familiar, ha, ha, spell familiar, familiarity, ancestry feed. I don't know why I can't pronounce that right now. Um, Alternate form, medium humanoid ancestry, relevant to where you grew up, typically human, called the tailless form. And then we have the frozen winds, which is cold resistance, uh, treat environmental cold effects as if they were one step less extreme. And your alternate form is a common medium humanoid ancestry prevalent where you grew up, which is a human. So my vote is officially... I don't want to say officially because once again, you guys can overrule... But I am kind of thinking that Empty Sky might be the way to go. Doesn't necessarily mean we have to do an air kineticist or anything along those lines, but that is the one that I think provides the most benefit. And I don't know if I was going... Well, <laughs> it kind of depends on whether we're doing a melee or a range kineticist. If there's no votes, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go empty sky. I'll say that. Well, for the moment, I'm going to put empty sky in there. And we're going to accept that. And then we have our ancestry feet. Okay, empty sky. So the two that make the most sense, once again, if we were going to do a melee, would be retractable claws. That would be 
the one shape changers intuition shape changers intuition allows you to kind of see through disguises gives you a secret perception check for you to realize that the creature is transformed it's good depends on the campaign you're running but it's very situational star orb is a familiar in all basics it's it's a familiar and there are other ways to get a familiar for a kitsune but i don't think that the familiar in my mind isn't the way that i would necessarily go so raven's path you're saying earthly wilds do you want to go wood uh kitsune lore lore is always good for recall knowledge but unless you were doing something specifically in Tianjia or maybe one of the other settlements that's around, I don't know how good I don't how good how good Kitsune Lower would be. The one that I was thinking was Foxfire. Foxfire is another ranged attack for when you basically overflow your kinetic gate and your kinetic aura drops and you have that third action that you don't know what to do with. Wood or Earth are the big defensive ones. That is true for the lower feet. Yeah, you do get... <laughs> okay, I got, I got two, I got, I got two, vo two voices here. So we got Foxfire or Kitsune Lower. You are right in that Kitsune Lower gives you proficiency rank in diplomacy and deception as well, which I stepped over, which I shouldn't have. Looking at the chat, looking at the chat. I should do a random die thing somewhere. I actually have my dice here. So we got, oh, I just hit my mic. I apologize, you're gonna hear that. So let's bring out a set of dice. So we got Kitsune lore and we got Foxfire. So, have a D6. Evens are going to be Foxfire. Break the tie. <laughs> Break the tie with my gut. Uh, that's a tough one. Okay, so that so that we're not jinxing this. My gut is going, or the random gods. Let's go random gods. But I'll tell you what. Okay, I'll tell you before I roll. Before I roll, my gut is Foxfire. However, we're gonna do uh, random, we're gonna let the random gods do it. So Foxfire is going to be odds. Kitsune lower is going to be evens. There's no way for me to roll this where you guys can see it, so you just have to trust me. It is an even, so we're going Kitsune lower. Ta-da, that's what we have. So we'll add those to our skill trainings here, which we might as well right now, which is deception and diplomacy. Do, do. Oh, it's taken up somewhere else. Okay. So now we're going to get into our kineticist things. So kineticist, we have elemental familiar. That's if you want a familiar, we can, I guess we can go over it while we're going through it. So a uh, small creature made of elemental matter springs forth from your kinetic gates. It's made of one of your kinetic elements. Uh, it doesn't have any, it's, it's just a familiar. You can do a bunch of things with it and that you can do with any other familiar. You can give it, you know, mastery or the regular ones. If you want it to be able to do something, I actually have a familiar with one of my other campaigns that I have dark vision and uh, it can speak, so it's kind of like our little scout, and it got killed once because of that, but fortunately we were able to bring it back to life. Anyways, that's a whole other story. Extended Kinesis. I don't, in my head, and maybe this will change after we go on, and this is all, by the way, I'm making a video about these general feats too, so I have been reading all of these. This one is very situational. We basically have... Proliferate, which means you can make something grow more. That's the only one that really makes a lot of sense. Sculpt, I don't know. Once again, I think this one is very situational, but I don't think it should be the first feat we take. There are two that I think are really in the running here, 
and that would be Versatile Blast, which allows you to add another damage type. All your Elemental Blasts have basically two attacks, except for Fire only has one. So this will allow you to add three. I'm sorry, Fire only has one when you are single gating. I apologize for that. But um, this allows you to add a third type of damage so you can get over resistances. And Weapon Infusion, this is if you're doing a melee type Kitsune, and you can basically add this to your, well, it can do range too. Add one of the following traits of your choice, Agile, Backswing, Forceful, Reach, or Sweep. And you can also do ranged up to 100 feet and a volley of 30 or 50 feet and the propulsive trait or the range 20 feet and the thrown trait. Do we have any takers on either one of those? Remember, the Weapon Infusion also allows you to... If your next action is Elemental uh, Blast, you can choose the weapon shape. Then you can also make it bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. It gives you the versatility, once again, to hit a bunch of different things. That Versatile Blast would do both at um, melee and ranged. And Versatile Blast just adds another damage type to your Elemental Blast. My thoughts are probably going to be, well, actually, let me, let me explain my thoughts on the Kineticist. Unless you are very specifically doing earth or wood and single gate, probably, these are just my thoughts. And definitely don't take this as the rule. I am still learning about it, still reading a whole bunch about it. But especially at first level, unless you are very specifically going defensive, getting into melee might not be the wisest choice, especially if you were the only kind of tank in your party. I kind of think of this as more of a spell slinger than an actual melee or monk type character. So my thought is to go to Versatile Blast. Anybody have anything else that they might want to think of? And I'll give you a couple minutes. <laughs> give you a couple minutes. I'll give about 10, 15 seconds of a look. Or we could do random gods again. And I'm kind of, but like I said, my gut is telling me versatile blasts. All right, I'm gonna give it another five more seconds. And I am going with verse, uh, what do we got? Both are good choices, I know they are. <clears throat> you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna cancel this. We're not going to select one right now. And here is why. We are going to pick our element first. Our element, or we're going to pick, so we need to pick single gate or dual gate. But now, there are benefits to either. If you get single gate, let's go ahead and go to that screen up here real quick. We don't need to be in, you got <laughs> Raven's Path as Weapon Infusion. It's very good. Uh, so with your single gate, that's gate's threshold, I went too far. Do, do. With your single gate, you basically get two first level feats that you get to pick, plus single gate gives you, if you're air, you can stride or fly, if you have a fly speed, up to half your speed, or you can step for free. Earth gives you a plus one circumstance bonus to AC until the start of your next turn. Fire increases the damage die size of fire damage. Fire is not one that I was necessarily planning on playing. Fire is all about damage, especially if you're single gating it. Uh, metal, this would be if you're going melee, you choose acid, electricity, or piercing, or if you expect to get hit a lot. Because if someone touches you with a unarmed attack or a weapon without reach, so most attacks, being honest, unless you're fighting a large creature or someone with a glaive or something along those lines, you get to pick whether they get uh, acid, electricity, or piercing damage. Equal to half your level, minimum one. And then water is you can move creatures up to five feet or 10 feet in a body of water. Um, you can't move a creature in there, obviously. And the creature needs to be willing to move. Failed at save against the impulse, you succeeded against a impulse attack roll against. This is good not only for positioning the enemy, it's also good for positioning your friends. 
There is a first level feet for air that is very good for positioning friends as well. So that's something to keep in mind. And then wood is temporary hit points equal to your level that lasts until the start of your next turn. So that's the benefit of getting single gate. The benefit of getting dual gate is, so let me go back for a second. The benefit of getting a single gate is you get two impulses from the same element, plus you get this particular impulse junction. And then dual gate, you get to choose two from different, basically elements at this point in time. You get the infusions later, and at fifth level, you can also fork the path and pick another element as well, and then do infusions at that point as well. So where are we at? So we're doing dual gate. Okay, we are gonna do dual gate. Now, what are our elements? So we have, let me go to my notes here. These are some of the things that I kind of, I'm kind of putting together. What did I do with them? They're over here. So air is a little bit of offense. Let me just take that back. Air is good on offense, good on support, really good at utility. And by utility, we mean battlefield positioning, moving things around. This is first level, super bad for defense. <laughs> Earth is really keyed on defense. Its offense is good, support is good, utility is good, but it's really keyed on defense. Fire is probably the most pointed of the elements, especially at lower levels. It is a lot of offense and a little bit of utility, not much defense or support. Metal is mainly defense with offense and support and a little bit of utility. Uh, water is a lot of support, decent offense and defense and poor utility. And wood is mainly a support class with good utility and defense and not real great offense. Although I do like that if you've seen that one feat with the uh, campfire. <laughs> you basically have a campfire and you can choose to shoot flaming logs out of it. That's kind of fun. So that is kind of where we are for that. And what elements do we think we should be taking? My gut is probably... Out of those choices, I am kind of thinking that air is a good one for movement. And then from there go into something that has either defense or offense. He <laughs> would. So Aaron Wood could be a thing. Let's do what the other suggestion was, is look at the composites, because those are just down here. Now you don't get those feet four and feet six, so you're not gonna get those for a while. Ah, what am I doing this for? Uh, composite impulses, there we go. So if we were to do, we had, okay, air and water. So air and water is going to be water, wood, metal half, power wood. Air and fire, air and earth, metal and wood. Wooden earth, water. Wooden air is tree of duality. An ephemeral tree bursts forth floating on air in an unoccupied space of your choice within 60 feet. Blooming flowers and fungal growths shed pollen and spores, which a swirling gust of air spreads in a 10 foot emanation around it. It lasts till the end of your turn. You can do cleansing pollen or hallucinogenic spores which is healing or mental damage, dazzling basically your enemies. So the build so far, and we're going real slow, so it's gotta be a Kitsune. This is just a refresher. It's gotta be a Kitsune, and we decided an Empty Sky Kitsune, Kitsune Lore. We decided Dual Gate, right now we're choosing our elements. Lightning Rod, I've actually heard, isn't that great. I don't, I haven't seen it in practice yet. But supposedly it's not a great, the tree one is pretty cool. I'll tell you one thing I like about wood. Let me go over here. There's one spell that I really liked about wood, and this is for utility or support more than anything else. And that would be... Do do. Oh, 
Uh, where is it? Where is it? I apologize. Um, I had it all queued up in my head and then I forget which one it was. Anyways, there is one where you can basically do protector trees. Okay, it's a protector tree, spell of rank equal to half your level rounded up. If, so you can basically put one near one of your friends and have that be the one that soaks up damage. So I am personally, well, okay, let me not say that because we're doing this as a group. So what do we think our elements are going to be? Just put whichever one's your favorite in the chat. I should probably get like a Discord server up or something like that. It could turn a little bit crazy. Water and wood is good for sport. Water and air is good for manipulating movement. Water and air is really good for manipulating movement just because of what you get out of it. You can really control the battlefield with water and wood. Especially, do, do. Both with your junk and impulse, which you would get if you were single gating, but it, you, it also allows you to move people around. We got water and air, wood. So we are going to go with, <laughs> I'm thinking in my head. Let me look at the first level ones again. And I apologize. Air and metal, air and metal. That sounds like a 80s cover band. Um, deflecting wave, you would take acid. Infinite protector tree is pretty fun. It does look it. I know that's the thing about it is, and it's one, and in truth, it's one of the things why I thought this chat could be fun or this stream could be fun is because there's so many different options and none of them are wrong. Absolutely none of them are wrong. So, okay, I'm gonna put one. We're gonna do air. Air is one of them. Water, ocean balm. So, deflecting wave. If you take acid, bludgeoning fire, slashing. You're not off guard against it. One more. Okay, ocean's balm, living sea, wounds and douses flames. Healing. Tidal hands. I'm sorry, 1d8 healing. Uh, Emphatic gesture, you create waves that rush out from you in the shape of your hands. You either form two into one. This is an attack. Winter's clutch, gleaming flakes. So that is water. Wood. Let me switch mice real quick. Wood, fresh produce. That is that nut that gives you, they can regain 1d4 plus one hit point. Hail of Splinters, Attack, Hardwood Armor is very good for armor. Timber Sentinel, what do we got? Okay, let's do water. If you really wanna know, that's kinda of what I was going towards. This is if you're gonna be a melee character. In my head, I know it's way more than that, but I like the healing out of the water. So we have an Air Water Kineticist. And that is what we've kind of figured out. So now that we have the air water kineticist, yeah, wood, if I, if I was going to single gate, wood was one of the ones that I was really, really keying in. What did I just click? Yeah, I want to do class feet first. So class feats, aerial boomerang, this is a line attack, which is pretty good. So each creature takes 2d4 with a basic reflex save. Air cushion is, you can basically slow the fall. Deflecting wave, we saw that before. Um, it basically blunts or disperses an incoming attack. Elemental familiar, I like familiars, I really do. They're super useful. I don't know if I'd want to do it here. Air impulse is kind of cool, isn't it? Well, air, air impulse is up here, though, isn't it? Do, do. I apologize. Are you talking about the junk rate? The gate junctions are so cool. 
This impulse junction I love a lot for movement. Air Boomerang, Four Winds. The Anemurai, Monarchs with Four Winds. Propel, this is the movement one. You propel four creatures, target up to four willing creatures. So, okay. Ocean's Balm, this is healing and resistance to fire for one minute. Aerial Boomerang, that was kind of what I was leaning towards. Okay, air, aerial boomerang. Then for the water. Yeah, four winds is also really, really good because you get to move four, you basically get to move your party within 30 feet of you. So that is really cool. Uh, deflecting wave, elemental familiar, extended kinesis. Nope, nope. Versatile blast. We still have the versatile blast weapon fusion. Okay, the water impulse feet, deflecting wave, ocean's balm, which is healing, tidal hands, and winter's clutch. Winter's clutch, uh, gleaming flakes of chilling snow fall on 10-foot burst within 60 feet, and it's 2d4 cold damage with a basic reflex save, covered in a snow drift and difficult terrain. Really good, super good. I don't even know of a better utility spell from another class out there at all. Yes, I know. For the, the weapon infusion, that is one of the ones that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, tidal hands with an emphatic gesture. You create waves that rush out from you in the shape of your hands. Two 15-foot cones uh, or one 30-foot cone. They take 1d8 bludgeoning damage. If it critically fails, you also push that creature five feet. Ocean's Balm is healing and deflecting wave once again. Yes, Kitsunes do not have strong skill support. The only Kitsunes are very normal for that, and intelligence is probably going to be one of our dump stats when we get to the stats part of it. So, yeah, picking up skills is a good thing. Plus, it's got to be Kitsune. I, I have a fox for my logo. <laughs> so, for... Water, which one are we picking? Once again, Deflecting Wave is allows you to blunt an incoming attack if it's acid, bludgeoning, fire, or slashing, which is a lot. The only one is correct. Ocean's Balm is healing. And I love playing, I love playing support characters, so bards and clerics are my favorites. So I would lean towards Ocean Balm, but that's only because I like Ocean's Balm. The other one that's really getting me is Winner's Clutch, which is another support one. It's not attack, but it allows you to create, to me, this is the biggie here, is it's not even the damage. It lets you make a 10-foot burst of difficult terrain. Okay, so we got, let's see, Ocean's Balm, Deflecting Wave, Ocean's Balm, Deflecting wave. <laughs> so we are not doing Winner's Clutch. We are doing one of the two. We're doing Ocean's Bomb Deflecting Wave. Like I said, this one's great because except for piercing, you get all the attacks, all the regular physical attacks, and two of the, spe of the elemental attacks. You can't be off guard, so you can't be flat-footed or off guard, and you yeah, must be aware so it can't be surprised. An ocean's bomb for healing. So we are going to random god it again, pulling out another d6. It's going to be odds are going to be deflecting wave. Even is going to be ocean's balm. I rolled another two. I, I realize you don't have to trust me at all, but I rolled another two. This is the second two I've run the. I've rolled though. I rolled two for the last one. So I we are doing ocean's balm. And for our air impulse, I am honestly thinking of four winds, but let's look at the other ones real quick. Once, so we have air cushion. It's kind of what you think it's going to be. A creature within 60 feet is falling. It uh, flows upward to slow the target's fall to 60 feet per round. So it's going to reduce your damage. It expires. The creature doesn't reach the ground within one minute, but that doesn't count for damage. So it's good. And at range of 120 feet, 
four wins. I know that's, that's really the one that I like a lot. Whisper on, and this is messenger. <laughs> you speak in a whisper, a soft wind carrying your words far away. This is the effect of the message spell. Exactly. Within a range of 500 feet and it can only target a creature surrounded by air. If you start your message with the target's name, you and the target don't need to be able to see each other, nor do you need line of effect. Range of a mile. I'm kind of like in four winds here. I don't. I, I think that is the that's the play. And we're gonna kind of stick with that. I clicked the button, which means we should, we're sticking with it. So back to what we were talking about before, what we were talking about before. Back to what, let me, I'm looking through the chat real quick. Do, do. I love the infant protector trees. I'm looking for weapon. Yeah, so that was Rohit. We had the, the two that we were looking at before too. We might be going with aerial boomerang. I'll bring this one back up again because we did already pick air and we did pick our water. But the two basic ones that we were arguing for before, Versatile Blast, which gives you another damage type, which, you know, when you're in combat or anything like that, as soon as you do a recall knowledge or you have a thermitage in your party that can go ahead and, and find information out, find out what their weaknesses are or what they're immune to, it allows you to pick another damage type, which is always good. And Weapons Infusion, man, this ranged thing is so good. If you're, if you're melee, then... Agile, backswing, forceful reach, sweep, especially sweep. I like agile a lot. But are we still sold on Aerial Boomerang or do you want to go Weapon Infusion? I'm not going to do a Roll of the Gods. We're going to leave it at Aerial Boomerang unless we have, if you can't get, I know it can increase your range by a ton. Does it do damage? Let me read this again. Oh, that's right, because you get to change bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. You are changing my mind, Rohit. I know, Aerial Boomerang gets you back to that one. Aerial Boomerang, 2d4 slashing damage to anything within, 60, within a 60-foot line. Each creature. <laughs> we got a bunch of... Finally caught up from the beginning. Good. So... Are we doing random gods or are we picking one? I got weapons infusion. So, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let, let me see. Let me do, let me do a, a vote count here. So I'm going to go from, so where he said four wins with two gates, just grab boomerang. You already have plenty of options. So that's one for boomerang. Then we have weapons infusion, one for weapons infusion, one for boomerang, weapon infusion, boomerang, weapon infusion. It's tied. I am going to gods it again. We are going to do arrow boomerang and weapon infusion. I don't have a vote because we're doing this together. I would probably still stick with aerial boomerang, but we're going to do gods. Arrow boomerang is what is Eve is odds and weapon infusion is evens. It is odds. So we're going to stick with aerial boomerang. I know. Well, did it? One, two, three. So I got, let's see, Rohit doing Weapon Infusion. I got Rylan doing Aerial Boomerang. Okay, let me just do Weapon Infusions first. Let me count this. So DJI was Aerial Boomerang. Then we have Rylan Aerial Boomerang. We have Daniel Boomerang. So that's three. And then we have... Weapons infusion, one, two, it was three, three. <laughs> no, or he, you had, you had weapons infusion. Oh, it's four. So it's weapons infusion. So we're going to do weapons infusion. We still get the difference in basically damage types, which is always good to have more versatile damage types. And we get the huge range thing that we're going to be getting. The only, here's, here's my only issue. I don't want to say issue because it's not an issue with it. All these things are cool and all these things are super valid. This implies that you have a weapon and we are going to have a free hand at all times. You kind of have to have a free hand. Go with the gods. Well, the gods said aerial boomerang. Um, 
This implies that we're going to be using a ranged weapon or a melee weapon. And this implies that we're going to be just blasting. What did, let me do, I'm going to accept this for a second. We're not done, but do, 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 we did Kitsune lower. So we don't have, because one of the things we were talking about is Foxfire would give you a non-elemental attack in case you use an overflow and your aura was down. But we're sticking with that. So we are going to, what's the chat say? They're both nice. Go with the gods. Go with the gods, go with the gods. See, I hate doing this. I don't want to, um, I know what I would pick if I was by myself. I'm going to go with Ariel Boomerang. The gods said that, the dice said that. Hope you don't hate me. So with that, this is what we get out of it. So we get kinetic aura, which we kind of know about. Your kinetic aura is basically what allows you to do whatever you're going to do. He's going to have wind and water, so we could do something. And this is, and the real, here's the only reason why I'm saying why this is even remotely important is because I decided, even when I first set up this live, is I'm actually going to get this character commissioned for an artist to do. So the aura for wind and and air, I'm sorry, for water and air is going to basically be like, it could be a mist, it could be a, a gale, it could be a big circular rainstorm type thing. So there's a bunch of things we could do for that. Uh, channel elements, which is where you tap in your kinetic gate in order to do your elemental blast. Driving sleet would be really cool because that actually would be very cool. Uh, low light vision cuts Kitsune. Chain shape, Kitsune. Base Kinesis. Base Kinesis allows you to generate, move, or suppress your elements. So we get to do that for two elements, which is air and water. And then Elemental Blast. Elemental Blast is going to be 1d6 electricity or slashing for 60 feet. So actually, man, that's a really good combination. Now that I think about it, because you get 1d6 with range, or you get 1d8 with less range but it depends on what you want to do. You have bludgeoning and you have bludgeoning, slashing, electricity, and cold. So it is nigh impossible to be immune to all of those. That's actually a really good combination. You guys pick good. Uh, we do get a Kitsune spell familiarity. Days, Forbidding Ward, Ghost Sound. Days is actually really good. Ghost sound is changing in the remaster. I forget what they're calling it, but it's not only in the, just so you know, in when the remaster comes around, ghost sound is changing to not only an auditory illusion, but they're allowing you to do a visual illusion with it as well, which is kind of cool. Forbidding Ward is pretty awesome. Figment, there you go. Thank you, Rahid, I appreciate that. So that is our Kitsune at first level. Let's see what this has in here. Has our has all our little actions. Figment sounds really cool right now. Now, Ocean's Balm is our healing. We have four winds for movement. We have Elemental Blast for our base attack spell. We have Aerial Boomerang and... Okay, let's, let me get this in a way that makes sense and I'm speaking normal to everybody. So we have our attacks, our Aerial Boomerang, Elemental Blast. Base Kinesis are for impressing people at the bar, more or less. <laughs> uh, four winds is our base positioning movement support, and Ocean's Balm is our healing. Making Illusions is super Kitsune, and that is probably the one that I'm probably going to fix. Days is really good. It's just a really good condition spell, but simply because of the Kitsune thing, I'm kind of thinking that that's going to be the way to go with that. So I'm just seeing that truthfully, because I didn't pre-do this at all, I am making this, let's not pick days. Let's do go sound. What? Hold on a sec. Want to blast. Kitsune spell familiarity. Choose, we want ghost sound. 
So the innate spell. All right. For some reason, I was thinking it was just going to pop up automatically. I don't know what I was thinking, but it, if we got it, might have been the divine. So we're going to pick ghost sound for a kitsune. Now we have pets, which we did not do familiar details. We'll go ahead and set that up later. Feats, all of our feats. And all the actions that we can do. Other things we can do is, because I normally have this set up for, and this is, Sly here is going to be going into some of our playthroughs, some of the examples for how to do things. And I'm probably going to be doing more of those. I'll, I'll explain a little bit later too, but with the remaster coming out, like I, there are, I should bring up my phone. I have a list of things, of video ideas that I'm going to be doing. And there's more subsystems, victory point, and and But there's a bunch of things I was going to do. But now that I know that they're hitting a little bit of everything with the remaster, I'm kind of timid on going all in on a big video. I'm going to have to redo in a couple months. So we're going to start doing, still do some of those that I know that are safe or that I think are important, even if I have to redo them. However, but let me, oh, let me show one thing. Does anybody use Hero Forge? And the reason why I'm saying that is I had been playing, so I was in, I actually work an honest to God, full real-time job. I know that might not seem uh, like it sometimes since I post a lot and, and reply to comments and stuff. But uh, if it's a passive meeting or I'm on break, this I did at lunch, but I was playing around with Hero Forge. And this is kind of my idea for when I get it commissioned. This is sort of what I'm imagining he looks like. So this was me just messing around during lunch when I was trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, I do. I will say this. I did actually buy it so that when you go ahead and want to make a token, you can actually download it and capture it. Yeah, I love Hero Forge. I use it for everything. Uh, and what I mean by that is heroes. Hold on a sec. Like when I was doing a... Uh, do. For some of the bar scenes and stuff like that, for an, an upcoming playthrough, which is a bar fight, upcoming playthrough, like, because there were no tokens for bandits or some of these things that I wanted to create in that particular scene because they weren't in the beast area and I only have the beast area tokens for foundry. So I was going, I'm starting to make all my little tokens in here for, for that particular fight. But let's go back over here. So we did that. I am saying that we, and I love Hero Forge. I'm going to say we move on and we go, like I said, I normally do first, third, fifth, and 10th. We're not going to go all the way up to 10th because I'm not comfortable enough going to 10th. But how about if on this particular live, we go to, um, we go to at least third. So at this point, we get to pick another class feat. So our class feat can be either, and I have not we're going to be reading these, especially the new one here, which was Voice of the Elements. This one allows you to speak the language of your basically kinetic plane that you are pulling or channeling the energy from. So for this, we'd get Susserin and we would get Thalassic. Thalassic. And you can communicate with mindless elementals on a basic level if they have a trait that matches one of your elements. It allows you to use diplomacy to make an impression and to make very simple requests and a circumstance bonus to charisma-based skill checks you attempt against enemies of one of your kinetic elements. The sus language, I know. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, that's a good point, Raven's Path. It did, I, I actually, for a second there, I looked down, I have a little timer here and we're at like 56 minutes, which isn't including the seven minutes. So yeah, we're, we did basically an hour. So, but this is where we can pick up some things that we left behind. So we had the air cushion, which was the falling one. Eh. Deflecting wave was one of the water impulses that was a popular one. Elemental familiar, and I love familiars. I just don't see it in this build, but I do. I love familiars playing it. Extended kinesis, proliferate, regulate, and sculpt. 
I would, I'm interested to see what someone does with this. Like I'd love to see a playthrough or wait for some more videos to come out and see other people, other people's builds. Cause I don't know how this could be used in anything other than earn an income. Proliferate maybe, but a lot of these are very weird. Kinetic activation, um, rather than incantations and gestures, you can use your kinetic gate to directly unlock the potential. This is basically if you want to get wands that have, for us, it would be anything that has air or water involved in it. So we could do wands, we could do a staff that could use spells, and this would allow us to do that. The example here, if you channel fire, you can activate a scroll of fireball. So this would allow us to use, it's, it's actually a very good and powerful one. What do we got here? Sculpt is an air or water. We could make like cute little ice swans for parties. Um, <laughs> tidal hands. This would be a damage spell, either two 15 foot cones or one 30 foot cone. And it also allows you to move creatures if they critically fail. Versatile blasts, once again, gives us more damage types. I think we're actually good on the variety of damage types. Kinetic activation. I like kinetic activation. Weapons infusion, which we didn't pick. That's still on the table. Whispers on the Wind, once again, is the message spell. And Winter's Clutch, Gleaming Flakes of Chilling Snow. This is the one that gives you difficult terrain. I mean, it gives you damage, 2d4, cold damage, super cool. And it does level with you every two levels. So at first, third, so on and so forth. But the big thing is you get difficult terrain. I actually like that, DJ. Deflecting away for defense and or grab weapons infusion. Okay, so Winner's Touch or Winner's Clutch. I just like the difficult terrain part of it. Um once again, it's just battlefield control. Weapons infusion, deflecting. So this is defense. Let me see. The only reason I'm reading this is, this is personal defense. This is basically more types of damage as well as range, but it implies you're using a weapon. Let me read this real quick though. Your shape blast of elemental power. No, you shape blast of elemental power into a form of a weapon, such as a sword. So no, this is, Okay, I'm gonna take Winner's Clutch off the table. I just really like the difficult terrain thing. But this is also your guys' character too. So let's go ahead and we got Deflecting Wave and Weapon Infusion. We can vote or we can go ahead and let the gods do it. I need to get like a webcam and point it down so you guys can see rolls. So what do we got? We got Wait about 10 seconds for 10, 15 seconds. I mean, I don't know. Let me explain this. So if we are going to roll, deflecting wave is going to be odds. So one, three, five, and weapon infusion is going to be two, four, six. Not seeing anything in the chat. So we are gonna go with the gods. Hope you guys trust me. So like I said, one, three, five is deflecting wave. Two, four, six is weapon infusion. That is the third two out of four rolls we did. So it is even, so we are doing weapon infusion. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking too, Arlen. Oh, for some reason it needed to re-log in. I'm saving this on my Google Drive. So, let's not go up to 11. And then skill feet. Uh... Trick magic items also good if we wanted to once again use scrolls, wands, that kind of stuff. Ravening's Desperation, can't paint now. It's can't, uh, we won't do Uncommon. Plus neither one of those are that. Great, although if you were doing a stealth, air actually is pretty good for stealth. That actually might not be a bad one if you were doing a single gate air. Uh, dubious knowledge is always kind of fun. Bon Mott is all, uh, as always, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I never took French. I took German in high school for some stupid reason. 
Exactly. Because skill feats, because they're like, okay. If the only place, I don't want to say the only place, I love assurance, but I play support characters. So assurance is really good for performance and really good for medicine. That's what assurance is really good for. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Thank you very much, Ryland. I appreciate that. And we need to pick background too. Okay, let's do abilities. So our big thing is going to be constitution, uh, charisma, okay. I would say that we probably don't need a bunch of strength. Um, I would say dex would be more important as long as we max out our con. Yep, dex, that's what I was gonna say. I appreciate that, <laughs> you agree with me. Um, constitution, then we have dex, we have con. Now, so that gets us to plus two if we're going to do that. Con dex, charisma. So we can't get dex to plus three. We can get it to plus two though. Wisdom, intelligence, charisma. I'm not doing strength. Intelligence is not important. Charisma, the only thing we would do with that is... I'm going to go back just for a second. I realize that we already took like an hour and we still haven't picked a background, which we still have to do. Is because there is a Kitsune feat that I do like, and that would be the... Well, basically the one that allows you to intimidate with a glare. But... We're not doing that. So let's go back to this. And what's everybody saying? You're right for the leather, especially, and we actually might want to bump it up if we ever want to get studded leather to a plus two at some point so we don't face the penalty. Thank you very much. That's a good call because we're dying for places to put it. Okay, here's the other big thing, and I have it actually, actually have it in my video. I'm going to put it in wisdom, and here's why. Is they have, and I'll show you in a second, do, do, do. Uh, where is it on this always? Where your save saves. Super. They have expert at fortitude, expert at reflex, trained at will. Will is their weakest by far. So we're going to go ahead and put one into will. Thinking about that. Or wisdom, not will. Yeah, to use a two free boost, but I'd... I'd rather play it, I don't want to say straight. It's a, That's a variant rule. Or is it even called a variant rule? What's it actually called in the player's handbook? I forget what section that's under, but it's in the character creation section. I know what you're talking about, but I'd rather not. And I don't, I, I, it makes me sound like a weenie and I, I apologize for that, but I don't want to cut out wisdom for day. I really, getting will up is pretty important. Getting the will save up is pretty important. That's our weakest, but Let's kick all that aside. Skill training. Skill training is... Medicine is a good one to have. Uh, what are we thinking here? because I will be more than happy to go through. Medicine is good for any character, without a doubt. You need to have at least two in your party. You just do. It kind of doesn't matter. So I'm going to say we already have nature. We'll do medicine. Well, oh, wait a minute. You know what? Let me take this train off. Let me look at that again real quick. Where's our healing bomb, healing bomb? We have Ocean's Bomb. It's an impulse. We can use this and it's 10 minutes. You know what? You're, you're right. We actually don't need it. Yes. So that would be... Oh, I'm saying yes. I didn't tell you why. Ocean's Bomb has a cooldown, but it's 10 minutes. So it's kind of just the same as any other healing. Uh... Oh, skill feet. Skill training. Uh, for rec or recall knowledge ones. Religion is always good. We have nature. Oh, 
I'm going to do religion. This is going to be for the, because remember we have basically three, we have five skills to pick. Yeah, can. Let's put it here temporarily and see if we want to pick another one. We also have, we are air. Stealth could be something that we could do. Um, occultism is decent, but only for recall knowledge. We don't have intelligence. Occultism isn't going to be great. There aren't a lot. I'm going to say stealth. I'm going to say in our, here's the thing. So this is going to go with the rest of our party. We already have Emily, who's a rogue, so we don't necessarily need thievery. Yes, we do. Well, we already have diplomacy. We got that to start out with. Do the finish there, skill training. These are what we can pick from here. We got stealth. Yeah, diplomacy came with Kitsune background, I believe, with the empty sky Kitsune, I believe. Uh, I would say here we pick, we have diplomacy, we could do deception. We have a plus one charisma, it's not great, not bad. Out of all of these, I'm going to say acrobatics is one. Oh, that is our deception. Okay, so let's bring this one back on the table. Anybody have a strong feeling for this? Mine would be acrobatics. Yeah, mine would be acrobatics. But does anybody have any strong feelings for something else? Strength isn't going to be bad later because we are going to get to a plus two at some point. Intimidation is always nice, and especially if we get the intimidating glare from our ancestry later. Acrobatics is good for escape, plus it's good for um, squeeze and a bunch of other things. Exactly, get out of grapple, yeah. Okay, acrobatics, that's where I was kind of gonna go in anyways. And we are gonna be dex builds, so it'll be helpful. So this is that. Then we have back to our skill feet. Additional lore could be interesting. Acrobatic Performer, Assurance, Bargain Hunter, Battle Medicine. How did we get Battle Medicine? We're trained in medicine, that's why. Uh, that's a possibility. I don't want to take too long in this. Dubious Knowledge, Experienced Professional, Express Rider, Eyes of the City. Track down targets with the help of locals. This is actually... This is if you are doing a city type thing, High Helm. Um, uh, uh, I have it back here. Sky, the first one is Sky King's Tomb. I just got noticed that the second volume is getting done. This would probably be really good in High Helm and Sky King's Tomb. Group Impression is good. Lengthy Diversion is actually really good. Um, natural Medicine, no cause for alarm, no. Quick Identification, no. Quick Squeeze. If you are a small character. Background. Oh yeah, we still have to do background, but we're gonna pick one of the ones from the uh, class thing. Rare allowed for backgrounds or for uh, skill feats? Are there any skill feats that are? I apologize, I should know this. Oh, only at second. Oh, backgrounds. Okay. Yeah, we are going to pick, we are going to pick one of the backgrounds from the, the thing. This will be that, you know what? We're probably, because we're already an hour and 10 minutes in and we still got to pick this one. You know what? We could sit here. I, skill feats kill me every single time because uh, we're going to put battle medicine in right now. Bon Mott. I love Bon Mott. It is so much fun. Okay. We're going to go with that. We have a healing. Battle medicine would be great for two heals during a combat, but man, I love Bon Mott. And he's a Kitsune, a trickster, a joker, seemingly reserved, but like to throw in some dry wit type stuff. That's kind of the Kitsune mindset. And Bon Mott would probably work in really well. So let's go to backgrounds for Kineticist. And we are picking one from here. And it's actually super easy. Where'd it go? Where'd the backgrounds go? 
thought I clicked on backgrounds. Oh, it's ancestry and backgrounds. That's why. Uh, elemental blast, base kinesis, extract elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gate junctions. These gate junctions. Have you guys looked at these gate junctions? They are nasty. Why am I missing backgrounds? Class features, ancestry and backgrounds, first level. Oh, that just says that there. I'm sorry. I feel like an idiot right now. I apologize for this, guys. I, I'm, I'm losing. I did a little section on backgrounds. Uh, why can't I find it? And they're here. I know they're here. Is it after all of the feats? I already started making notes for the next little video here. Oh, good Lord. There's composite elemental allies. I am missing the backgrounds. Ah. Uh. Elemental Backgrounds, page 44. Here we go. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. So we have air and water. That would kind of, now we can do Crystal Healer, which is fine. We aren't Earth, though. Deep Sea Diver, Sapphire Depths of the Sea. That's the flavor part of it, and I love the flavor part of it, but... I'm keeping you guys on a super long time. Your obsession with the ocean depths cannot be contained to the world alone. You've read tomes and journals. Choose two attribute boosts. One must be to strength or wisdom. And one is a free. We could redo our set abilities too real quick. Athletics we get for free. And plane of water lore. And underwater marauder skill feat. And then sky rider. Uh, burden flight is something to envy. Envy if you did, but not for long. You barred the mechanical gliders are sought out. So the expense of these experiences may have been a notable factor in why you undertook the adventuring lifestyle or perhaps you are making new methods of flight to master. Choose two attribute boosts. One must be dexterity or wisdom. We're fine with either one of those and one is a free attribute. Acrobatics, plane of air, and catfall. Skyrider is kind of what I was thinking. The underwater marauder feet. Page 45, elemental, oh, the rare ones. Okay. You know what? I didn't look at these. That makes me feel stupid. I know the Concordance Researcher, Concordance Scout, but that seems like a, almost like a Pathfinder Society thing. Elementally infused, you're exposed to a strong burst of elemental essence originating from an elemental plane, most likely caused by a planar breach. Your body absorbed the elemental essence with no ill effects, and now it coalesces within you. With time, you've learned to project elemental power in a manner safe to you, but deadly to others. Choose two attribute boosts. One must be Constitution, da da, or Charisma, and we can free one up. One is a free attribute. Choose one elemental plane, air, earth, fire, water, wood. You're training the corresponding lower skill. Air, we would get Gale Blast. Water, we would get Spout. Okay, we're doing... We're doing that. <laughs> so it is going to be elementally infused... Did it show up here? It should. Which uh, we are going to do elementally infused gale blast damage. Spout is, is that the one that raises people up five feet using water? Air, that's kind of what I'm thinking. We're going to do elementally infused air. Yeah, there's nothing, it's rare, but it's rare because you're exposed to a, a strong burst of elemental essence originating directly from an elemental plane. It isn't rare because you have to be born in a certain place, location, or some type of theme. So that's actually a good one. Prerequisites not met. Oh, well, let's redo something. Okay, we are probably going to cut out here at two, but we it's probably because we need to redo... Dex is 14, strength is 1, con is 18, intelligence, charisma. Nothing needs to change there. We lost 
diplomacy. That's why we lost Bon Mott, so I say we get it back. Um, I'm thinking of losing deception. Let me check this one real quick. Diplomacy. Trained in diplomacy. We are trained in diplomacy. Why did we lose Bonnot? Anybody in there? We're trained in diplomacy. Yep, we have, it's saying, oh, it's saying not diplomacy. That's why, because we didn't click this. Once we switched backgrounds, I think that switched out. That's why we lost diplomacy. Now we have it back, and now we have Bon Mott back. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do three, because we have another general feat, and good lord, this is not only skill, but general as well that you can pick here. So... We're going to leave it at two. So this is what we got. What I'm going to do is I will go ahead and print, you know, you can print this or publish this to a PDF. I'll publish this to a PDF and I'll put it in the community on the boards and everybody can take a look at it. And this is Sly. We'll come, I'll, I'll come up with a last name for him and we'll get art done. Art usually takes a couple weeks. Oh, just one other quick thing I wanted to say is so there are, well, let's finish talking about this first and then we'll go into some of the channel stuff. Absolutely, Raven's Path, no problem at all. So we basically have Sly done. He's gonna be added to our playthroughs. So we he is gonna be one of the ones that we use as examples. If we want to do a melee or we wanna do a, a, a weapon or a ranged or more like a, a monk type kitsune, which you can actually do with a straight wood or straight metal or something along those lines, Sly of the Northern Reaches. I like that, actually. Okay. Okay. We're going to put it in there. I don't see any reason why not. Unless something... Oh, I, I, I actually like that quite a bit. Um, anyways, so we'll put this out there. We might make another kineticist if we want to do... Another melee or something. Melee. I always pronounce it wrong. Another melee type character. But that's different. I am going to get... I want to get art commissioned and a little character sheet done up fairly nice and willing to spend a little bit for it. And then we basically have our Kitsune. Or we basically have our Kitsune. I have my Kitsune, but we have our Kineticist now. And this is the one that we're going to be using. We're going to be using this slide. Now I'm going to move on to a little bit of channel stuff. So tomorrow I have a third-party publisher video coming out. And this is a... I've, I've been asked questions before on because I've done three other independent creator reviews. And I use them. I did do a little bit with them, but I didn't really play test them. The one that's coming out tomorrow, I fully play tested it. Let, so... The next one, uh, the one that's coming out tomorrow has five different, we'll say books to it, because I don't want to spoil anything for tomorrow, but it has five different segments to it, is we started the adventure. I play tested it with a few friends. I actually did GM it. And we got through the first book. This could be a three, four month long campaign themed around one specific thing. I think it's fantastic. It is done by, led by a team that has... 10, uh, I have to count it. You'll see your name tomorrow. Published on, published author who actually has like four real books that were bestsellers and things like that is the project lead, four other writers, full Foundry support with a Foundry developer on the team, but still it's a third party team that kind of came together to celebrate, I don't want to say the death of the OGL, but let's just say the birth of the Orc license. So they came together and put this module together. Oh, uh, it's fantastic. I actually really like it. And yes, if in case anybody's wondering, it was play tested and I love it. The Foundry integration is, and you're gonna think I'm joking, but in the video I show you can go from 
installing it in Foundry to importing characters and running a campaign in five minutes. Now, I love it. It is, it is situational. I don't want to say situational. It is a themed campaign. So be prepared for a themed campaign. But all that aside, the other thing I want to talk about is, so at the beginning, I finally got a few things figured out in Stream Elements, and I'm going to fix the chat because the chat's super light and doesn't show up very well. Um, but I'll probably be popping on a little bit this weekend, testing some stuff. If I pop on and you want to chat, feel free to start chatting or come on or do whatever. But I might be on for like 10, 15 minutes messing around with some Stream Elements stuff, coming down, coming back on. Because I'm finding that if I do unlisted or private, you can't get the same... You can't do the same things, especially if you want to see how th some things work. But I got sidetracked again. The other thing is I talked about before, that opening where I have a countdown timer, seven minutes, I commissioned music a little bit earlier. It got started on the 6th. Delivery is supposed to be the 22nd. So we're going to have a, I basically commissioned, and this was, this was what I told them I wanted. And it is, so Final Fantasy... 14 specifically music with a lo-fi slow beat behind it. So it's going to be cinematic with a nice lo-fi beat behind it. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, so that'll be at the beginning and the... Oh yeah, I saw that Raven's Path. I, I apologize for that. I didn't... I only... I did less than an hour last week. But I'm really looking forward to this music coming. And then we'll get the art done and... We'll have more stuff coming, going around. I am going to be spending a lot of, this is, I said at the beginning and I'll say it at the end here. I'm going to do a, I, I stayed away from doing class breakdowns because it's, you have those people and they're great. So don't even think I'm saying anything bad, but you have people who can break down a class in 12 minutes. I'm not really that great at that. I spent 36 minutes just going over the basics of kineticist and I still have to do feats. To, so the kineticist is going to be about a four or five video series, probably. Next one, I'm going to be going over the general feats as well as the backgrounds and some of the, uh, the things that are missed out of the basics for this character creation. And this creating a character actually helped me figure out how to group things together for some of the other videos. But that'll be going on while we're still releasing things like quick tips and some rule stuff and this, that, and the other thing. But we are going to be leaning into Kineticist for a little bit here. So Sly is going to get some play on the battlefield when we start going to show how the mechanics of playing a Kineticist works. Now, with all that, we got basically, you know, an hour and 20 minutes in. I think I'm going to go ahead and call this for tonight. I do appreciate all you guys showing up. I really do. This was a lot of fun. I wanted to build a Kineticist. I will say this. If I would have built a Kineticist, in my mind... When I first heard about Kineticist was going to be a single gate wood. As I was going through the past couple days, I'm thinking single gate air. But I didn't want it to be just something I wanted. I wanted it to be something other people want to watch too. Going through this whole thing here, an empty sky kitsune with air and water and just the ore that's going to be wrapped around him. <laughs> that's going to be awesome. But... I appreciate everybody for coming on the stream and I appreciate you interacting. I hope to keep making these a little bit better, a little bit at a time. And let me move off to this since we're kind of done with that. But just as a little refresh here, I am going to go ahead and, you know, print off this PDF and I'll put it up on the community thing so people can look at it. And I'll make sure I'll put it in the description to Sly for a fly guy. <laughs> I'm not, I am not fly at all. I'll say that. But nor am I the Sly strategist, remember. Um, I'll go ahead and put it in the community thing and also put it a link to it in the description of the video so people can come back and look at it after they've viewed it or see it before they go on, they come on to see if it's even worth their time. Plus, I'll put a starting time for when the video starts so people don't have to wait seven minutes and just randomly click through. Uh, someone actually put a comment in in my last three lives kind of all in one day and I was like, oh, that's a fantastic idea. So that way you don't have to sit there and wait for the stream starting soon thing. But I appreciate you guys, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. So happy adventuring, and thanks.